Hi, my name is Erica Blaske. I'm the community outreach nurse for the Campus Health Center. Today we're going to be talking about uh, particularly the flu shot and why it's so important this year during COVID-19 and we'll also touch a little bit on other shots that you might want to get as a college student. So we'll talk a little bit about the flu first because it's important to understand the disease and um, why then it's so important to get the vaccine. So the flu is a contagious respiratory illness caused by influenza viruses. There are many different strains of influenza viruses. Um, the A and B strains are the ones that infect humans and are responsible for annual flu epidemics. So our current flu vaccines have two A and two B strains in them every year. Um, the thing with flu viruses is they like to change, they like to mutate, they like to adapt. Um, and basically try and evade our vaccine. And that's why we have to get a new vaccine or you have to be revaccinated annually to try and keep up with the viruses that change so easily. The flu is known to be spread mostly person to person by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. Uh, you can breathe in those droplets when you walk by somebody or you can accidentally pick them up with your fingers when they land on surfaces, which then you, when you go to touch your face with your dirty fingers, you can pick up the virus that way. Um, you may recognize this as also a way that COVID-19 is spread. And so that's why um, we're hoping that with the social distancing and the mask wearing and the frequent hand hygiene that's been going on in place this year because of COVID, um, maybe it'll help with our flu numbers, but it's still important to get your flu shot. Um, we know that an infected person can spread influenza to others one day before symptoms develop and up to five to seven days after becoming sick. So you could be potentially infected and in spreading uh, uh, the flu around, um, and you may not even know it because you don't even have symptoms. Common symptoms of the flu include fever, cough, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, body aches, headaches, and fatigue. Diarrhea and vomiting are possible, but it's more common in children. The problem is when you start having other complications from the flu, which can cause things like sinus and ear infections, um, inflammation of the brain or heart, which can cause, which can be deadly. Um, you can have multi-organ failure, pneumonia, and then people with the history of asthma can get severe asthma attacks as a result of the flu. So we'll talk a little bit about the difference between COVID-19 and influenza because they may sound very similar. Um, with COVID-19, the biggest thing is that you can experience a loss of smell or taste where the flu shouldn't cause a loss of smell or taste like that. With COVID-19, symptoms tend to develop an average of five days after infection where flu symptoms tend to show up much sooner. So you can be out spreading COVID-19 unbeknownst to you for a lot longer out in public than you would with the flu because you tend to have symptoms faster. Um, COVID-19 has more super spread events where flu doesn't tend to have as many super spread events. This is um, just community spread and how easily it spreads throughout communities. Um, probably because we have the flu shot, which is why the flu doesn't have as many super spread events as COVID does, where we don't have a vaccine for it yet. COVID-19, one of the uh, major, or um, a major complication of COVID-19 is um, the rare risk of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, which can be very, very serious. Um, with the flu, otherwise healthy children are at high risk of severe complications as well. For COVID-19, um, you may experience blood clots in the veins or arteries of your brain and heart. You don't notice blood clots like that with influenza. For COVID-19, um, there is remdesivir, which is an antiviral that's only available under the emergency use authorization as a treatment. Um, it has not been FDA approved completely as a confirmed treatment forever for COVID-19. It's just under the emergency use authorization, where influenza does have four different antivirals that are approved by the FDA for use for treatment. Um, flu has a vaccine, COVID has no vaccine yet. 
Here's a quick chart that kind of breaks down the different symptoms between COVID, flu, cold, and allergies, because a lot of them kind of tend to overlap. And that's kind of the problem that we may run into this fall is, you know, unless you get tested, we may not know what a specific symptom you have, whether it's one of these different things. However, an important thing to point out is that these aches and body aches and pains are very common in the flu. You don't get them as often with COVID-19. Um, don't really get them with allergies. Um, and, but fever is common with both COVID and flu. So of course, if you're feeling sick, it's best to maybe be evaluated by a physician or you can come to Campus Health um, before you take it upon yourself to go out in public because there's so much overlap, we just wanna be safe. So we'll talk a little bit about the burden of the flu in the United States. The most recent data comes from 2018 through 2019 season. That's our most complete data. Um, at that time, 35.5 million people were estimated to be sick with the flu. Cases started increasing quickly in November and they re remain at high levels through February. During that flu season, 490,600 hospitalizations were due to influenza. And then influenza during that season caused 34,200 deaths in the United States. 8,100 of those deaths were in the young adult age group. Um, well, the working adult age group, age 18 to 64. 75% of those deaths were age 65 and up. So the concern is, is if you're gonna be around others, we really wanna protect our older population from getting the flu. So that's why it's important that you get your flu shot. The flu vaccine is safe and effective. Again, going off the 2018 to 2019 flu season, which is our most recent complete data, um, approximately 49% of the US population was vaccinated for flu. The CDC estimates that this 49% of being vaccinated pre prevented 4.4 million flu illnesses, which is a huge burden for our health system, prevented 58,000 hospitalizations due to flu, and prevented 3,500 flu deaths for that season, or 10 lives per day for the course of a year. Um, according to the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, um, this is just speaking to the safety of the vaccine, there was only 3667 cases that received compensation for injury from influenza vaccine from 2006 to 2018 out of more than 1.6 billion doses given. And it's important to note that just because compensation was awarded doesn't mean the vaccine caused the injury necessarily. Maybe they settled out of court. There's a bunch of different reasons that compensation was given. Um, but you can see it's a very, very, very low ratio of injury to doses given. Some other vaccines you might consider as a young adult, um, of course, the annual flu, and then uh, making sure that you've had your Tdap, which is a tetanus diphtheria pertussis, at least once in your adult life after age 11. And then every year, once you've had your Tdap, you can get your tetanus diphtheria booster shot, which is every 10 years. You also might wanna consider the human papillomavirus vaccine, which is HPV for short. That protects you against that sexually transmitted virus that can cause things like cervical cancer, genital warts, head and neck cancer, things like that. The meningococcal ACWI is the four strain meningococcal virus, uh, protects you against bacterial meningitis, which is spread through saliva, which can easily happen when you live in close quarters, uh, such as a residence hall. The meningococcal B is another strain of bacterial meningitis that can spread through saliva. Um, and it's another strain that's not included in that quad vaccine I just mentioned. And this can be given age 16 to 23. I highly recommend this one if you're gonna be living in a residence hall or in, uh, with, uh, in a group. Um, hepatitis A is another one. That one is not required in the state of Michigan for uh, elementary school kids yet. Um, that one's spread through contaminated food and water. Um, you may recognize that name because we had an outbreak of it, I think maybe two years ago. 
Um, so that's a good vaccine to get as well. It's a two-dose series. Um, it's a very effective vaccine, uh, highly recommended. And then I didn't put hepatitis B on here because at this point, most of you probably had it as a child because it is required for school aged children, but you should make sure you've had your hep B vaccine as well because that one can be sexually transmitted or if you come into contact with someone else's blood. So you can contact the Campus Health Center with any questions or you need help uh, assessing your vaccine record. Uh, you can email us, campushealth at wayne.edu. Our website is health.wayne.edu. And of course, you can always message us on our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and then we do offer telehealth and tele um, or telephone visits now um, because of the pandemic. So we're just trying to keep you safe. So thank you for listening. Please get your flu shot this year. Uh, you can look for us around campus. We'll be at different events around campus trying to come to you or you can make an appointment at the Campus Health Center. Thank you.